Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. Winning over the MLB game scheduled for Saturday, May 18th, 2024. And if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my daily rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Saturday in Major League Baseball. First up, we see the Chicago White Sox taking on the New York Yankees. We're going to see Brad Keller and Luis Heal as the projected starters. You know, Brad Keller's pitched well in his first 12 and two-thirds of the season with the White Sox, but I do expect some regression going forward. Less than a strikeout per inning with five walks already in those 12 and two-thirds. You know, the Yankees' very good lineup against right-handed pitching, especially to start the month of May. And when you look at Luis Heal, we've mentioned the one big concern in his game has been the walks. He does walk a lot of guys. And we've seen, you know, 26 of them in 40, 43 innings so far this year. But the White Sox actually have the lowest walk rate in baseball against right handed pitching to start the month of May. So this is a pretty good matchup for Luis Heal, who's red hot right now, giving up one earned run or fewer in four of his last five starts. So, you know, racking up the strikeouts, like I mentioned, the Yankees are 4-1 and one in his last five games. And a lot of run line covers, a lot, you know, the last three wins were run line covers for New York as well. So give me the New York Yankees in this one. I'm going to lay the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Chicago Cubs. Bailey Falter and Shota Imanaga are your projected starters. You know, I'm leaning towards the over in this game. But Bailey Falter just faced this Cubs lineup, and while he pitched pretty well in that one, he only had one strikeout in six innings of work. He gave up a home run as well, a couple of walks, five base hits, and now the second straight time facing this Cubs lineup. I think Chicago gets to them. You know, they, they've been okay against lefties recently, but I, I really think this is a good spot for their lineup to get to Falter and a you know, so-so Pirates bullpen. On the other side, Shota Imanaga's pitched really well this year, 5-0 with a .96 ERA. But that last start against Atlanta and even the previous start against the Padres, you know, seven-plus base hits in those games. We saw him have three walks in the last one against the Braves, and his pitch count got way up there early in that one. He only went five innings, and he had about 90, 98 pitches, I believe, by the end of that start. So, you know, that's a little bit concerning. Now, facing a Pirates team, it's hit lefties very well, had a good start to the series offensively. I'm going to take the over in this Cubs-Pirates game. I was honestly looking to take the Pirates because I think the value, you know, it, it, obviously at this kind of price, with how well Imanaga has been to start the season, we're getting a really good price with Pittsburgh. But I don't love Bailey Falter in the matchup, so that was the big hesitation for me. I'd rather just take the full game over. Next up, we see the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. Zach Eflin and Kevin Gosman are your starters. This is a pretty interesting matchup as Kevin Gosman has just been really tough to read this season. We saw early on, we were fading him early on, and it was working well. You know, the Blue Jays were 1-4 in, in his first five starts. But now recently, the Blue Jays have won each of his last three games. He pitched well against the Dodgers and the Nationals. But the most recent start against the Twins was one of his worst starts of his career and uh, where he went three innings, 10 base hits, seven total runs, and six of those were earned, a home run given up. And even when he pitched well against the Nationals a couple starts back, he needed 112 pitches in only five and a third innings. So it's safe to say Gosman's not 100% right now, at least in my opinion. When you look at the expected ERA, you look at the fact that he's just not as efficient as he was just last year, uh, not as productive either. So I do worry about that. And the Rays have decent numbers against righties so far in the month of May, much better numbers than the Blue Jays do. Now, Zach Eflin, I'm also a little bit concerned with his game. Now, the Rays have won each of his last two starts. He had uh, five innings, three runs in his last game against Boston, seven innings, one run against the White Sox in the previous game. So he's pitching pretty well, but he's somebody that doesn't walk a lot of guys. Only four walks in 53 innings. He throws a lot of strikes, but sometimes has issues putting away hitters. We only see 41 strikeouts for him in those 53 innings. And he, he leaves pitches down the heart of the plate. You know, simply put, we've seen him give up at least one home run in his last four starts and a lot of extra base hits and sharp contact to go with it. So that's always a concern with Eflin. But I do think he is the better option, at least right now in this matchup. I think the Rays bullpen improving is also a good sign for this team. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Rays on the money line in this one. Should be a great game. Next up, we see the Colorado Rockies taking on the San Francisco Giants. We're going to see Ty Block and Jordan Hicks as your starters. I think this matchup benefits Jordan Hicks. You know, he, he pitched at Coors Field against the Rockies back on May 8th. It wasn't his best start, wasn't his worst. It was good enough for a Giants victory. He does a good job of keeping the ball on the ground, and especially at Oracle Park, facing a team like the Rockies, who have one of the highest ground ball rates in baseball. I, I like this matchup for Jordan Hicks. And, you know, Ty Block, he's been pitching pretty well for Colorado, especially in his role. You know, he's been featured out of the bullpen and as a kind of, uh, you know, spot starter here and there. But 
I do worry about the fact that he doesn't really pitch deep in the ball games. And I know the Rockies bullpen's been better recently, but it still is one of the weakest bullpens in baseball in terms of expected numbers. And even the ERA is not the best. So I, I worry about that in this game. I'm going to go with the San Francisco Giants on the run line. Not my favorite game on the board. Next up, we see the Seattle Mariners taking on the Baltimore Orioles. John Means and Luis Castillo are your starters. John Means was excellent in his first start of the season on the road, but at Camden Yards, his first you know, home game of the year, he wasn't the sharpest. Four and two-thirds innings, six base hits, four earned runs, and a home run. And we've seen him have some issues at Camden Yards over the last few years. And now you're facing a Mariners lineup. It's not, it's not the Diamondbacks. You know, Diamondbacks crush lefties this year, but still a decent lineup. I think Means could struggle in this one. I think Castillo is the, honestly the much better option, at least right now. I mean, Castillo, after a really bad start to the season, has been very sharp since. You look at his last five starts, two earned runs or fewer, all five of those games. Great strikeout numbers, at least seven or more in four of his last five. And uh, the walks have been kept to a minimum recently. He gave up the two home runs in that last game to Oakland, but it was two solo home runs. It really didn't hurt the Mariners in the end. It was an 8-4 to four victory. And I think see, I think uh, Castillo facing an Orioles team that in the month of May so far, not great numbers against right into pitching. I think this is a good matchup for Castillo and the Mariners' bullpen. So give me the Seattle Mariners in this one on the money line. Next up, the New York Mets taking on the Miami Marlins. Luis Severino and Braxton Garrett are your starters. You know, Braxton Garrett struggled a bit in that first start of the season against the Phillies, but I'm not really too worried about it. You know, the Phillies have been one of the best lamps in baseball this year. Garrett still had eight strikeouts in five and a third innings, had a seven to six ground ball to fly ball ratio, so did a pretty good job of keeping the ball on the ground. And the Marlins still went on to win that game in the end in extra innings, and they were getting a pretty good price in that one. Well, you look on the other side, the Mets, you know, Luis Severino, he's pitched well overall this year, but in recent games, the last two starts, 10 innings and nine walks to go with it. So really the free pass is kind of getting up there. And, you know, it's also given up some sharp contact against the Rays and the Braves. We saw him give up a home run in that one. So a little bit worried about his recent form. You take a look at the Mets bullpen, which in my opinion, at the beginning of the season was the best part of this Mets team. You got guys like Reed Garrett, who, you know, didn't give up an earned run for quite a while. Edwin Diaz returns after the injury last year. But now we saw Garrett struggle a little bit against the Phillies. Edwin Diaz blew a couple of saves in that series. It's a little bit concerning now. If the Mets bullpen goes, I think this team's really in trouble because the lineup's been mediocre, especially the back end of the lineup and starting rotation's not the best either. So I'm going to go with the Marlins in this game on the money line. I think the value lies with the home team. Next up, we see the Washington Nationals taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Mackenzie Gore and Christopher Sanchez are your starters. You know, we just talked about how the Mets have really struggled against lefties this season, and Christopher Sanchez was able to face the Mets in his last start on May 13th. And while he pitched okay, and you know, the Phillies wanted to win that game, he also gave up a lot of sharp contact, seven base hits, and three walks to go with it. So if he wasn't able to get out of some of those jams, he could have been, you know, it could have been a lot worse in terms of the final line. And now you're facing the Nationals, who have also not been great against lefties, but you got Mackenzie Gore on the other side who's pitching well this season. He already faced the Phillies once. The Nationals won that game as a pretty sizable underdog. He went five and two-thirds innings of two-run baseball, had six strikeouts to go with it. And, uh, you know, to me, I think the value is with the Nationals in this game. The Phillies have been very impressive. Their lineup's been strong. Their rotation's been one of the best. And the bullpen's also really improved if they're a, me a real a miserable start to the season. But I, I think Washington keeps this one close and if, if not wins the game outright. So I'm going to go with the Washington Nationals plus the one-and-a-half runs. Next up, we see the Minnesota Twins taking on the Cleveland Guardians. Bailey Ober and Logan Allen are your starters after a really bad start to the year against Kansas City where he gave up eight earned runs, Bailey Ober has been excellent ever since. He's only given up more than two runs in one start, and that was against the White Sox, and it was still a Twins win, six innings, four runs. It wasn't a horrible outing. So, you know, Bailey Ober has been one of the hottest pitchers in baseball. The Twins have won four of his last five, and, you know, he's uh, racking up the strikeouts. You look at last year's numbers against Cleveland. He faced them twice, had six innings and seven innings. Shutout, shutout. It was one nothing and 2 nothing in, in favor of the Twins in both of those games. So when you got Logan Allen on the other side struggling this year, I know he bounced back in that last game against Chicago, but the White Sox have been one of the worst lineups in baseball against lefties this year, so I don't put too much weight into that. I'm going to go with the Minnesota Twins in this game on the money line. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Houston Astros. Bryce Wilson and Justin Verlander are your starters. Now, I'm not going to say Justin Verlander is back, but I will say a really promising sign in his last game against the Tigers. The big concern for me was the strikeouts. He wasn't missing a lot of bats. We saw that against the Yankees and the previous start against the Guardians, but he had eight strikeouts and in seven innings against the Tigers and shut out baseball. Astros went on to win that game 9-3, to exactly what you're used to seeing from Verlander and what you're hoping to see in the future. 
Now, this is a pretty tough matchup against a solid Brewers lineup, but I think Verlander pitches pretty well here. Bryce Wilson on the other side. I mentioned the regression concerns. We saw that a little bit in that last game against St. Louis. Four innings, five base hits, two earned runs. It was a home run, five walks to go with it, and only one strikeout. That was, for me, by far his weakest outing of the season. Now facing an Astros team, it's starting to heat up offensively, even without Jordan Alvarez heating up. You know, he's been rather cold, but the rest of the team, some of their role players stepping up right now. I think Houston's a dangerous team right now. I'm going to go with the Astros on the money line. Next up, we see the Oakland Athletics taking on the Kansas City Royals. Ross Stripling and Seth Lugo are your starters. Seth Lugo's got to be the most surprising player in baseball for me this year because at age 34 and his only like second or third full season as a starting pitcher, he has been one of the best pitchers in the American League in all of baseball. I mean, he's 6-1 and one with a 1.66 ERA. To me, you know, I mentioned the regression concerns because he was giving up a lot of sharp contact and a lot of base runners, and he was forced to get out of a lot of jams. But recently, that hasn't been the case. He had no walks in his last game against the Angels, had 12 strikeouts all of a sudden. You know, he's not really known to be a strikeout guy, but he's had eight or more strikeouts in three of his last four starts. So he is pitching some of the best baseball of his career, and it's tough to go against him in this spot. He's gone six and two-thirds or more in each of his last four games, so very efficient starting pitcher. You got Ross Stripling on the other side, struggling. The Royals hit right. He's very well at Kauffman Stadium. I got to go with the Kansas City Royals in this game and lay the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Texas Rangers. Patrick Sandoval and Jose Urania are your starters. You know, the Angels have actually been pretty decent against right handed pitching recently in the month of May so far. Top 10 in OPS and ISO. And, you know, that's with uh, Babbitt below 300. So the Angels pretty solid lineup right now. The Rangers have not been great against left-handed pitching. Now, Patrick Sandoval is tough to read right now. He's been inconsistent. That last game against the Royals was not a great start, but he didn't give up a single home run in that one. It makes it three straight games now with no home runs. And the walks really haven't, haven't been an issue for Sandoval recently. I think he bounces back here, and I think there's value with the Angels in a game like this. So I'm going to take the one-and-a-half runs with the Los Angeles Angels and take them on the money line as well. Next up, we see the Boston Red Sox taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. We're going to see Cutter Crawford and Miles Michaelis as your starters. You know, similar to the Angels, an offense, you know, the Cardinals that struggled mightily at the beginning of the season is now starting to heat up against right in at pitching where they're top five in OPS and top 10 in ISO in the month of May with a very high walk rate to go with it, 11.3%. Cutter Crawford's pitching well overall this year, but recently not his best work. I mean, he went six innings, four runs against the, the uh, Rays in that last game in a loss. Six innings, two runs with a home run against the Braves in a loss as well. The Red Sox have now lost three of his last four games. He's still pitching well, but not as dominant as he was at the beginning of the season. And Michaelis has been better recently. Two quality starts in his last three games. It's it's a work in progress. You know, Michaelis still has that ERA at 6.19, but I do think he's trending in the right direction. And I'm going to take a shot here with the St. Louis Cardinals on the money line at Bush Stadium because I think they have the much better bullpen, the better bullpen availability after the Red Sox bullpen was just chewed through in that Rays series you know, extra innings games, close games. It's really tough to, you know, with no days off after a series like that to go on the road and play a series like this. So give me St. Louis in the money line. Next up, we see the San Diego Padres taking on the Atlanta Braves. We're going to see you Darvish and Bryce Elder as your starters. We've mentioned the woes for the Padres offensively against lefties recently, but it hasn't been the case against right in the pitching. They've been very solid there where they're number two in baseball and OPS against righties in the month of May with a sub 20% strikeout rate. Pretty decent isolated power number as well. Elder, I've mentioned the regression concerns. I mean, we're already seeing that. He's got that ERA just below five. His last game wasn't his worst against the Mets. He had six strikeouts in five and a third innings, but still seven base hits in that game. Makes it back-to-back -back games with seven or more hits and three of his last four with seven or more hits. The walks are always a concern. He gets behind the count very often. I think San Diego can take advantage of that, especially a guy like Luis Arise. I would take his over total bases in this game and you Darvish is in great form right now even against the Dodgers one of the best lineups in baseball against righties he went seven innings a seven strikeout ball hasn't given up an earned run in his last three games give me the San Diego Padres on the money line next up the Detroit Tigers taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks we're gonna see Jack Flaherty and Zach Gallon as your starters Zach Gallon has pitched well recently his last two games 12 innings of two run ball but I will say when you look on the other side Jack Flaherty I think can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gallon in this game the Dimebacks have not been great against righties. Flaherty, his ERA is already sub four, but his expected numbers are even better. He's got 63 strikeouts and 48 and two thirds innings. And I think if Flaherty and Gallon, you know, cancel each other out, 
The Tigers have the better lineup against righties in the last month and the better bullpen overall this season. So I think the value, especially at this price, lies with the Detroit Tigers. And this one, I know they have struggled in Flaherty games this year. They've lost each of his last four starts, but I still think that if he can keep them competitive in this game, this is actually an opportunity against a pretty weak Diamondbacks bullpen. The Tigers can find a win on the road. So give me Detroit on the money line. Next up, the final game for the Saturday card in Major League Baseball, the Cincinnati Reds and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Graham Ashcraft and Walker Bueller are your projected starters. Now, I wanted to back Graham Ashcraft in this game, but I just can't get there with them. You know, that last start against the Diamondbacks, I just mentioned how they struggled against righties. And, you know, Graham Ashcraft, I've mentioned, has been a lot better on the road than at Great American Ballpark. But even on the road in that game at Chase Field, three earned runs, two home runs, and seven base hits, three walks to go with it. Now, it was his second straight start against the same team. He placed Arizona on May 8th and May 13th, so that's never easy, but it's also not easy playing against the Dodgers in Dodger Stadium with how well this team has been offensively. And while Walker Buehler has not been great to start his season, that's for sure, I still think with Cincinnati's offensive issues and uh, the fact that the Dodgers, I think, will be able to get to Ashcraft early and often, I just, to me, I just can't get there with Cincinnati in this one. I think they'll be competitive in this game, but I still think the Dodgers find a way to win and cover the run line in the end. It's not my favorite game on the board, but I'm going to go with the Dodgers here and lay the one and a half runs and maybe take the team total over as well. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Manelli. Good luck.